Welcome to the evolution of esports, where you don't just play the game, you code it. The Code Combat AI League is the first of its kind. Part AI battle simulator, part game engine for learning real Python and JavaScript. Refine and perfect your code in your quest to become a Code Combat AI League champion. Competitive coding has never been so epic. Join now. We're here with the third place champion in the recent Lava Lake Arena of Code Combat Esports. Um, could you please tell us your name? Hello, I am Matthew. Uh, my Code Combat username is Loops. So you can call me that if you want to. And yeah. And so, Matthew, um, I've got a few questions for you. Obviously, we've been working together for a while. Um, with me as your instructor, for those of us that are watching, I'm, uh, they don't know, I'm Matthew's Code Combat instructor, have been for about... Since, uh, I think, th yeah, three years. So Matthew, how long have you been coding for? Um, so I've been doing Code Combat for closer to, I think closer to four years now, uh, but I've been actually doing robotics since I was five years old. Wow, and that's amazing. And so you had shared with me that this past weekend you were also in, in addition to your recent win in the Code Combat Esports, you were also in a robotics competition, right? Yep. And so can you share with us a little bit about how that went? Yep, so we uh, we moved on to the next level. We're going to regionals and we won a trophy. Ooh, let's go. That's awesome, dude. Okay, so now to go to move on to the Lava Lake stuff. Now, my first thing that I'm wondering is this isn't the first esports arena of Code Combat that you competed in, right? Have you tried some other ones? Yeah, I actually really like the Desert Duel game mode. I played that a lot. Even though I didn't get very good results, I had fun with it and I kind of analyzed it. Yes. So. Awesome. And so, so I'm kind of wondering when you come into a new esports arena, what is your first thing that you kind of do as you, you know, figure things out and develop your strategy? Uh, look at the hits. That that's uh, one of the main tips I can give. Look at the hits, analyze the game, uh, figure out what's best to do, and you'll be very successful. Because if you're Great. going in, if you're going in blind, then you have nothing, no knowledge of what the game is made of and what's made for the game. As well, you can look at other people's codes and what they do. Great, that, thank you. That's awesome advice. Thank you for sharing that. And so, specifically with Lava Lake, can you describe how you started out developing your code for that? I just really tried around. I spent just some time trying things out, trying new strategies, developing my strategies. Like my first strategy was really simple. I went up to the top of the map, I jumped over the lava, and I came back to the bottom. I did that in the molten thing, the thing before the championship. But when I got to the championship, I already had some developing knowledge about what the game mode was, and I just keep developing my code really well. Okay, and so now, how long, so I'm curious, because I'm wondering, you know, how much effort it took to get your great result in the ladder and ranking. So how about how much time do you think that you put into developing your code? Um, so basically it just takes it, it's not really like an hours. You just you just gotta separate some time to just develop code. Like from I ha I have a obviously I do a one hour a uh, lesson with Carson each week on Fridays. Um, I normally just spent that whole time just coding and developing my strategies. One hour a week really helped me. For my final code, I spent a few hours on it, but just developing strategies for like one hour a week works. So could you describe for us, how did you develop that, that fine, towards that final winning code that really put you in the top of the leaderboard? Um, I had an idea. I was building code and I had my best code running up. It, I was so proud of it, but it got me in uh, 28th of my age group. But I knew since I had time left that I could push that code, especially because I, I had been working on this uh, tournament for basically the whole tournament, and I, I could push this code to get me higher on the leaderboard. What I ended up doing is I ended up just trying and trying different strategies, and I ended up thinking 
of what the best strategy for me was. Like I took a drawing board and I just drew out a strategy, spent a few hours uh, fixing it around with that strategy. One time the strategy in 700th place, I just tried around and it got that perfect little fit. Awesome. And that actually reminded me, I had kind of forgotten about your sort of strategy of drawing things out visually. I think that could actually be really cool if we shared that. Do you think if I pull up the whiteboard, maybe you could just give a brief like visual overview with the annotation of kind of how you went through that process of, of maybe not if you don't remember exactly what you did. Yeah, fine, yeah, yeah just sure. Kind of like, yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to do whiteboard and then you can go ahead and kind of just give us an idea of just just that process you were just describing where you kind of use the visual drawing to help you okay i i generally draw with an apple pencil so uh, this this is not going to be pablo picasso so uh yeah but basically i saw i know i start right here right and i go over here because it's a corner of the map you know and i try things out like my first good strategy my best strategy before I put my final strategy in was to go up here, then make a little bit of a loop, shoot a fireball, and then move forward and keep on doing that. What I'm able to do with this drawing out strategy, which I really love, I'm able to be able to be seen that maybe if I go and I instead I go down here, I'll hit more range over here than I will if I hit up here. It's all, I, I just really, it's really easy for me to envision what I'm doing on a whiteboard because I'm able to draw out all my ideas. Like, one of my master ideas, one of the big parts was me shooting fireballs. At the start of my ending code strategy, what I did was when I was going to the side, I shoot a fireball. Guess what happens? Dead. Dead. Done. Dead. So, I developed the strategy of going up and then shooting. RIP. It's really just, I, I really like drawing it out. It really helps me envision what I'm going to eventually do. Awesome. So thank you so much for sharing that uh, with us. I think that, there you go, folks. That's the top strategy from a top competitor. We're hearing it from the masters here. So. Thank you for sharing. And let's get into, I am curious about, um, so when you think about these competitions, I think a lot of times, you know, people would assume that the person who has the most um, technical coding knowledge and experience would be the winner. But I think that's not always the case. Uh, as we've seen sometimes, sometimes you, there's people with more simple code, but maybe they have like a very ingenious idea. So I'm kind of curious um, what in, in your in your approach, just in general, and also in your winning code, what kind of what aspects of that came from your coding, your, your technical coding knowledge and what came from just kind of your own individual ideas that aren't necessarily coding related obviously you're going to get the ability and you're going to get the ideas to do bigger and better things when you have more coding knowledge that's just a fact if you're better at coding you'll do better in coding if you're better at swimming you'll do better in swimming it's just logical but the thing about it is you'll get better strategies by thinking about it. Obviously, you could develop more intense strategies of having knowledge and past experiences. But just knowing, just, just figuring out is completely different. You can have the simplest code and win the whole tournament. It matters about the strategy and what you can do to that code to improve it. It could be a four line code. It could win. Originally, my code was four lines and I got 30th place. It's it's really does not have to be an extreme code like my final code was only around 40 lines i can tell you some other people had hundreds of lines of code and i still got really close or, or in beating them so it really just depends on the strategy awesome and and on that same line so what do you think is the biggest thing that you bring to the table just like just skills wise or 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 attributes wise when it comes to taking on a uh, esports arena logical thinking 
I am very good, in my personal opinion, I'm very good at solving things out and getting logic together and figuring out what will work best. Obviously, I know how to code, but I know how to code because I've been doing it for years and years and on. But I'm it. I can think really logically and think about what can happen. And if you can think about what their move will be, it's really instant that you figure out the strategy that no one can be, that no one could beat you. So this is so this is kind of the the, the last big thing that I want to ask about. Um, so how do you how did your experience with Code Combat lessons impact your sports run? Really, the main thing is just um, it strategies. I was able to learn more things about uh, not necessarily directly with the esports. But in general, I'm, the lessons help me get through the worlds, like the coding worlds, which of course that's gonna give me more strat- that's gonna give me more strategy for the tournament. What are a couple coding concepts that you think you learned in in lessons that helped in your esports run? Figuring out good loops, how to do really well loops, and how to organize. That's the main thing. Awesome. And okay, lastly, just in general, what do you like about Code Combat Esports? I like that it's really easy. You don't have to sign up. You just got to sign up to Code Combat and you can play esports. It's really fun and very simple. Cool. And okay, I think that's all of my questions. So it just, is there anything else that you want to add or share? No, not really. All righty. Thanks everybody for tuning in to our Code Combat Esports recap with uh, our third place champion here. I am Carson and this is my student, Matthew, also the third place champion of Lava Lake Arena. Competitive coding has never been so epic. Join now.